Hello and welcome to the Poetry Exchange. I'm Fiona Bennett. And I'm Michael Schaefer. Oh, it's good to see you, Michael. Lovely to see you, Fee. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm, yeah, in fact, I'm very all right. It's, things are going on. Things are happening. Things are growing in my garden. It's hot and that's good. You have, in fact, had some some really exciting news that you're too modest to share with people. So I'm going to do it on your behalf, if you don't mind. And that is that you have had one of your poems published in The Rialto. That's a, it's a poetry journal. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, along, you're in the company of some uh, very accomplished poets, including our friend Roy McFarlane and many others. And your poem, The Entitled has been selected for this edition and uh, is sitting proudly on page 34 of the current edition of the Rialto. If you want to dash out and get it from wherever you get your poetry journals, uh, you will find Fiona L. Bennett proudly sitting there. Congratulations, Fiona. It's a really uh, fantastic achievement. Well, that's very, very lovely of you to say those things, Michael. Thank you so much. And it's a journal that I have yeah kind of admired and enjoyed for many years so it's wonderful to be in there and it's a really exciting and interesting theme um it's been edited by the brilliant degna stone and it's exploring the kind of thematic call out was really interesting about not performance poetry or page poetry or separating those worlds but kind of poetry with an interest in that idea of the spoken word of the poem however you you might choose to place that so it's it's it I think it's really interesting the work there's actually a very nice link there Fee to to our guest this month who talking about that idea of you know the spoken word and uh, she works for a charity called listening books and we'll put a, a link in the notes thing people can go and visit it's it's a charity that operates as a a lending library of audio books essentially i think its main focus is on people who have challenges around reading and so it does fantastic stuff um so that idea of the spoken word and um and the, the, the spoken poem and the spoken book is very much part of of her work and her world yeah it was a real pleasure um this conversation and Indeed, encountering this poem, which was new to me, and um, I think we both just really, really enjoyed uh, the conversation and getting to know this poem, which I think is going to be uh, a long time friend for me. So hopefully it will be for all of our listeners too. You'll be listening to Michael and myself talking about From Blossoms by Lee Young Lee. The poem that's been a friend to Jessica. Um, Is everything all right on the sound end on? It's very good. Is it all right? Good, okay. (laughs) Because, of course, you are in uh, in the sound game, Jessica. Is it listening books? Yes, yeah, I'm an audio producer for them. So I I do their podcast and I do a number of audio books as well. What's that sound? That's Fiona. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what she's saying. Sorry. Mm. That's all right. Sorry, that's, again, that is like just the hazard of being in audio production is always listening out What's for that problem sound. sound. Exactly. That? <laughs> is that me? Let's solve it now. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're releasing episodes monthly this year. So that's been fun to kind of launch a new series. It's wonderful that you've brought us this poem and uh, just wonder if you would give it a read for us. Oh yes, oh I'd love to. From blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned toward signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins, comes nectar at the roadside, succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all, comes the familiar dust of summer, 
dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin, but the shade, not only the sugar, but the days, to hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. From joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom to impossible blossom, to sweet impossible blossom. Mm. Well, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I, I have definitely feel that I've eaten a peach. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. <laughs> that was Lee and you, Lee. <laughs> you and Lee, Lee Young Lee together. Yeah. So we had this invitation to you to bring the poem that's been a friend to you. And I sense, Jessica, from the, the world of work you were involved with, there might have been many choices. What led you to, to come along with this one today? Um, well, yeah, I do, have, I do have other poems that have been uh, friends to me. Um, one that I've had as a friend for a long time is is also a friend to, to someone else um on your podcast and that was the poem spring and fall by jared manley hopkins and i think both of these poems come from the same era of my life i encountered them around the same time in my life when i was still in university and i think both of them I, you know what struck me and stayed with me was of course um, the way the knowledge of mortality creeps in and, and saturates our experience of the world. And so, of course, with spring and fall, you know, that poem, Margaret, are you grieving over Golden Grove unleaving? Um, when, you, when you get to the end, that it's, it's Margaret you mourn for, um, and, and that realisation as you mature... <laughs> that death is is always there in the background, as Lee Young Lee um, says. And so I think of these two poems as sort of companions, and I think of them so often, um, will recall the the Hopkins poem, and then and then recall this line from from Blossoms. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. And it was it was that line that called to me but but every time i revisit the poem there's more beyond that um so it's it's always an enriching experience for me it's really interesting to hear you say that jessica when i first looked at this last night that was the line that caught me because i thought oh this is so interesting He's saying, grab the moment and, you know, uh, and, and, and all the rest of it in so much of this poem. And in, but in, in that line, he's reminding us that death is present all the time. Yes. He's saying, there are days we live as if it's nowhere in the background. And in so doing, he's letting us know that it's actually always in the background. I thought, gosh, that's really interesting the way he's, he's done that. Isn't it? Yeah, because the, the scene that he describes, it's like a memory of buying peaches at a roadside stand. And I'm from, I'm from South Carolina in, in the US, which is a big producer of peaches, even more than Georgia, which is called the peach state. <laughs> um, and so I very much, this isn't why this poem means so much to me, but I also do very much recognize the scene of buying peaches from a roadside stand and the dusty skin and uh, the dust of summer. Um, but yeah, it's like the moment as it was lived, it was as if death were nowhere in the background. But when you recall the moment, when you look back on the moment, you know, you know, as a, as a mature adult, recalling these sweet moments of life, you, you can only recall them with this knowledge of death in the background. And so it's, it's, it's like the act of memory in some ways, um, adds the bitter to the sweet. Yeah. 
It's also making me think of another poem. I might have a third friend for you in this little oh, <laughs> genre of moment stuff, uh, which is a Thomas Hardy poem, which is different to this, but it is also about looking back at a sweet moment and going, oh, that was the sweet moment and we didn't quite know how sweet it was or how we hold it now in memory is, as you say, kind of all the sweeter for knowing its vulnerability in some way. Mm. Anyway, that poem's called The Self Unseeing. But not to digress into Thomas Hardy, but just that I'm very interested in that thing of, in the softest, kindest, gentlest way, Lee Young Lee is sort of saying, also, there is also a little bit of a call to pay attention, mm. therefore, right? Which... I think is really deftly done here. I love the verse that comes before. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin but the shade, not only the sugar but the days, to hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into it the round jubilance of peach. I mean, that's just phenomenal. Yeah. Just on there, I have got to just lift up the brilliance of the round jubilance of peach. Yes. I love that. I, I'm never going to look at another peach again <laughs> without thinking of the round jubilance of peach. That's brilliant. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I also, if we go one verse further back, you can see that already there is a sort of shadowing of death that's uh, that he's going to mention later, because he mentions dust three times in that verse. The, the peaches we devour, dusty skin and all, comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. And um, <laughs> for that to be repeated three times in such a short um, verse, it's doing a lot of work there, isn't it? Because with that imagery, I do feel the heat of a summer in South Carolina that, that grows peaches. I do I do feel it. I feel that dusty summer. Mm. Um but also it's a it's a reminder that the you know the fruiting season is the it's the end of a life cycle. Yeah, it has such ceremony about it, doesn't it, this poem? Hmm. You know, the journey of the peach. From blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road. Yeah. You know, so you, there's this sort of journey from, you know, kind of nature's glory quite quickly into kind of hard lives of labour and fruit picking and mm. commerce and it's all going on. But he gives all, all the moments of that journey of the peach, including it going into the body. It's, you know, it's full ceremony, doesn't and he? And then comes back at the end to blossoms. Starts yes. and finishes with blossoms. Yeah, which always struck me because when you read the poem, you're thinking peaches. <laughs> you're, you're thinking, yes. oh yes, the round jubilance of peach. We've eaten the peach, <laughs> um, and that was that was your first reaction as well. Oh, I feel like I've just eaten that peach, and yet the poem is from blossoms, yes. and and so it's interesting the way he brings us back to that. It's it's wonderful the way he traces its path from blossoms. And then into the hands of the of the labourers, and then into the the sweet fellowship in the bins, <laughs> which is also a wonderful. You can't help but just picture the peaches all nestled in there with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested if you can say a bit more, Jessica, about. The, so this was you at university mm. discovering this poem. Where were you at university? So I was brought up in South Carolina um, and I went to university in Oklahoma and we were we were very excited. I can't remember which year this was. We were very excited though because a real live living poet <laughs> was going to come and be the headliner at the conference that our English department was hosting uh, and it was Lee Young Lee. Um, and then at the last minute, there was a family emergency and he couldn't come and we were all devastated. I mean, I don't know if you've seen his photo, but he's also quite a handsome um, 
the poet. So uh, I remember my friend and I, we'd, you know, picked out our outfits. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we were, we were so excited to meet him. Oh. Um, and, and then I suppose as a consolation prize, I just bought all his books because he wasn't there. Yeah, so um, I think... I, you know, at some point as I was reading through his books, I, I came to this poem and that line that we talked about before about um, there are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. And actually, when I hear that line, it is always, it always has to slow down for me. There are days we live. It's like the, the days themselves are drawn out in memory. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. And I guess as soon as I encountered that line, it became a friend that um, that I've turned to periodically <laughs> through, through the rest of my life so far. Can I ask, from wing to wing is an mm. interesting one to, to have in there. Yeah. What, do you, what does that do for you? I mean... On a very sort of prosaic level, I suppose, or, or practical level, if you're back to thinking of the trees and the blossoms and springtime, that is also when the birds are, are there and so you can sort of hear their bird song. But obviously the he's not referring to, he's not even referencing bird song, but from wing to wing. And so you've got that impossibility of flight, the uplift of flight, I think, that exhilarating sensation. Um, it's a good question. It's a, I think it's a, a rewarding one to think about. Was it, what does it do for you? I think that whole stanza just sent me back to being seven or eight or something yeah. in the summer and those endless summer holidays. And it was, time was infinite. <laughs> you know, it really was. And you would go from joy to joy to joy. You would go from playing football with your mates to running around to, to you know, and it was just that. You know, I had obviously was had a very lucky childhood. I know that's not the case for lots of people. And, and, and I suppose the impossibility of that, you know, that is ephemeral. That doesn't, you know, of course it doesn't last. That's, you know, the, the freedom from responsibilities, from, you know, to just, you're, you're only... Uh, job in life is to have a great time <laughs> and uh, it made me think of that actually yeah mm. I do think um that those days we live as if death were nowhere in the background must be primarily childhood because I'm not sure it's possible beyond a certain point uh, to experience true joy without that in the background even if it's not what you're consciously thinking without that inner knowledge that it cannot last. I just think the as if is really key as well. Yeah. So I think there's also possibly the kind of day that you might live when you're older than a child where you were sort of consciously holding it in the background yeah. <laughs> and you're sort of saying to yourself, I'm going to live this as if, mm. you know, and, and in a sense there's an invitation there, I think. Mm. You know, this is where I'm with this thing that there's a sort of gentle instruction to pay attention to it and to allow yourself to both acknowledge it mm. and know that it's part of the cycle and that the dust will come. You know, it's that perfect balance, really, that spiritually mm. we all have to try and find our way to of acknowledging the inevitability and the, and the place of death in our life. Yeah, I think in that previous stanza, there's something of the duality of that, isn't there, with the to eat not only the skin, but the shade. You know, there's yeah. something of the the necessity of, of, of accepting both sides of things in a way and the totality of it all, I suppose. Yeah, and the shade, I mean, the shade is a lovely one for him to include because the shade can, can evoke death-like associations, but it's also the cool relief from summer, oh, yeah. you know? And so it's, 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 got, it's got layers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a very welcome thing, the shade, isn't it? In, yeah. the, in, the, in the familiar dust of summer. Yeah. Something this poem reminds me of is, so 
something of a philosophical question. <laughs> Whether you are, you are most living, most, <laughs> most living your life when you are conscious of it. And that, that actually, so when you mentioned the Thomas Hardy poem, mm. I felt like that was, what was the, the name of that again? It's called The Self Unseeing. The Self Unseeing. So it's right what you're talking about, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's this this question about whether looking at, whether noticing the joy that you're experiencing is is additive or subtractive to the experience mm. um, in some way. Yeah, that's exactly what that poem does. Really? It sort of, yeah, it describes a moment of people being in a, a kind of a party mm. and everybody's kind of there and together. And I, I think the last lines are, but we were looking away. Mm. As if to say, we were in full joy and we weren't recognising what we were in. Yeah. Fia, I've actually brought it up. It's quite short. Shall I read it? Yeah. Oh, please do. Brilliant. Yeah. The Self Unseeing. Here is the ancient floor, foot-worn and hollowed and thin. Here was the former door where the dead feet walked in. She sat here in her chair, smiling into the fire. He who played stood there, bowing it higher and higher. Childlike, I danced in a dream, blessings emblazoned that day. Everything glowed with a gleam, Yet we were looking away. That's so interesting. It's got a lot of those similar themes, hasn't it? Of, you know, it's got childhood and blessings emblazoned that day. Yeah, mm. everything glowing. Yeah. Mm. I'm definitely collecting that as a friend as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for reading it. It was lovely. Yeah. My husband and I were on this wonderful holiday in Greece. I remember just being outside we weren't doing anything extraordinary we were just outside walking together and I recalled both this poem and that line and and I also at the same time again less profound I suppose to recall a sitcom <laughs> um the American version of The Office there's a character called Andy and he says something like I wish we could know we were in the good old days while we're still in the good old days you know? <laughs> mm. That is profound. Yeah. yeah. I love the US office. It is, it's so good hearted, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's great. We always ask people if this poem were a friend, what kind of a friend would it be? Possibly not the kind you're taking to a party. Uh, <laughs> I think this is, this is one for quieter moments for one-to-one -one interaction. It's, it's interesting, actually, you know, there's the we in the poem, which is never spelled out who the we is. Um, I've always sort of imagined that it's a father and son because, um, because of another poem that's sort of paired with it in the collection um, that is about a father and son buying peaches. But it doesn't actually spell that out in the poem and so it leaves it wonderfully open for you to imagine whoever it is that's with you and I I never think of it as a crowd you know I always think of think of it if I'm inserting myself in there it's me and one other person you know maybe it's maybe it's my mom maybe it's my dad so I think yeah this is the this is the friend that you can have meaningful conversations with and um and that you can share both the <laughs> both the woe of life and and the joy of it i think lee young lee from blossoms from blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned toward signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship, 
in the bins comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all. Comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin, but the shade, not only the sugar, but the days, to hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into the jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. From joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom, to impossible blossom, to sweet impossible blossom. That was Michael with the gift reading at the end there. Our thanks to Lee Young Lee for permission to use the poem and share it with you. And indeed to Jessica for that wonderful conversation and for spending time with us. Jessica mentioned uh, her podcast in the conversation, so we will also put a link to that in the description. Do go and pay that a visit. And uh, she also mentioned one of her other friends, Spring and Fall, by Gerald Manley Hopkins and we spoke to Varney Capaldeo about that poem and it was uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the conversation didn't we Fee so uh, we'll we'll link to that episode as well in the in the notes and if, if you haven't heard that one go and find that one as well now I have actually got some genuine breaking news hot off the press Fee Latitude Festival have announced that they will be going ahead in 2021 from July the 22nd to the 25th in Suffolk. And they have asked us to be a part of the festival. Uh, We did it two years ago, and I'm thrilled to say that we will be returning to Latitude Festival this year. It will be the first weekend that everything is able to open up again, and we will be there in the podcast tent. So... Go and buy your tickets and come and find us there. We're not sure what day we'll be performing yet, but we're going to have some fantastic guests. It would be really great to see you. So do come and say hi. Wonderful. Summer reading. I've got some ideas. I can send you some things over. Oh, yeah. What have you got? What's what's on your radar? I just was happened to... You know that thing when you have those books and you think, oh, I never really sat down and read that. So I sat down and read um, Pablo Neruda's Love Poetry the other day. And uh, that was rather good for me, I have to say. Something about, um, yeah, these quite extraordinary. uh, I think a lot of them were written when he was on an island. So there's this sort of imagery of of that kind of floating through it, which is... um, seemed to work well for me in the moment the mood I was in at the time so that was great and also um been reading Ben Ockrey's recent uh collection A Fire in My Head oh is that a new one yeah really phenomenal Uh, I really like the bits of Ben Ockrey that I've come across actually I might check that out yeah Mm. That's about all we've got time for this month. We'll be back with you next month with more Poems as Friends. Until then, thank you for listening. Listener.